Ave Maria, this is Father Angelo for Standing Fast. Thanks for watching this series of videos on the secrets of the Knights Templar. In this last video, I want to talk about the fourth secret of the Knights Templar, which is the Holy Sepulcher. Now, the Holy Sepulcher, the place where our Lord's body was laid to rest after his death on Calvary, is probably the greatest shrine in the Christian Catholic world. There in Jerusalem, it is the most visited pilgrimage site in the world over the ages. People risked their lives to go and visit the Holy Sepulchre, and the military orders like the Knights Templar were established in part to protect the Holy Sepulchre to keep the way there from Europe open so that pilgrims could go there and venerate this place where our Lord's body was laid. Now, St. Bernard, in his letter, which I've been talking about in this series called In Praise of the New Knighthood, talks about how our Lord's place of death it was considered even more venerable and more desirable than the places associated with his life. And that is because our Lord passed through the veil of death. He rose from the dead. The tomb is empty. We venerate an empty tomb, not the place where our Lord's body is to be found. His body was ascended into heaven after his resurrection, and there he reigns at the right hand of his father. The tomb is empty. In fact, if you think about the day of the resurrection, when the women went to the tomb, and uh, the um, they thought that they would have to uh, roll, find someone to help them roll back the stone, they found it already opened. The tomb had been opened uh, so that they could look inside. Uh, but our Lord uh, was already gone even before the tomb was opened. He broke the seal of death. He passed through the veil of death uh, in a miraculous way. And so the, the tomb is open for the women so they can look in and see that it's empty. And this is the reason why people continue to go to the Holy Sepulchre, because it is the place of our Lord's triumph. It's where the law of death, the finality of death, is overcome by the the power of God. St. Bernard points out that, um, that there are two deaths. There is the death of sin uh, that was voluntary. Uh, man chose sin rather than God. And then there is the, the physical death which God imposed on man because he has sinned. And that all is transformed by Jesus Christ because our Lord's death is voluntary. He chooses to obey God. He chooses to obey his Father uh, and to pass through the veil of death. And, and he does so also physically. He physically dies on the cross and then he overcomes the punishment of death by rising from the tomb. And so we go to the Holy Sepulchre to learn this lesson that we also must choose a certain kind of death, not the death of sin, but the death of uh, our selfishness. We must choose, we say, we say in the Catholic world, we must mortify ourselves. That means to put to death something. And the thing that we are called to mortify is our sinful tendencies, our disordered passions. So we choose a harder way of life. We choose a disciplined way of life, and we die a little bit to ourselves every day, especially in the ego. Everything is meant to reduce our selfishness to the love of God. And so we die a little bit every day. And, and, then, and then when we go through our, our physical death at the end of our lives, God willing, we will have persevered to the end. And then when we pass through that veil of physical death, we will not find another kind of death which 
is for the damned, but we will find eternal life, a life which we already began to celebrate in this world through baptism and the life of the sacraments. So the pilgrims that went and continue to go to the Holy Sepulchre choose a straight and narrow way, so to speak. They choose a hard road. And in the Middle Ages, of course, the way to the Holy Sepulchre was a hard road. And in fact, historians today point out that before anything else, the Crusades were a pilgrimage. The, these men went to the Holy Land because they wanted to go to our Lord's tomb. And it wasn't just soldiers that went on the Crusades. It was people of all walks of life who wished one way or another to support this, this effort. And they went to Jerusalem to venerate our Lord's holy place. They wanted to go where our Lord overcame uh, sin and death. In the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, there's both the tomb of our Lord in one part of the church, and there's Calvary in another part of the church. The tomb that belonged uh, to Joseph of Arimathea uh, was very right there uh, uh, next to Calvary. And, and so... In, in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, there are these two mysteries, the cross and and the resurrection. Uh, the Crusaders and uh, the Knights Templar were known also to have venerated uh, a, a, a large portion of the Holy Cross, and uh, it was carried into battle during the Crusades and at the Battle of Hittim, uh, where Saladin overcame the Christian forces. The, 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 this precious relic of the cross was lost to to the uh, to the Muslims, and never re recovered. And so, you know, this uh, spirituality of of pilgrimage, and the spirit of the Crusades, is a veneration for the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord, and in Him we know that we conquer. It's out of love for the mysteries of our faith. The death and resurrection of the Lord is the true mysticism of the church. We're all looking for God. We're all looking to find him and to experience his love. And the great paradox of our faith, the great paradox of Christianity, is that it's spiritual warfare and, and that we only find the goal and that experience of our Lord's presence and love when we are willing to endure hardship when we are willing to face uh, the fire and to go through trial and, and tribulation. Uh, that was the spirit of, of the Knights Templar. They adopted a, a spiritual discipline, the discipline of a monk, of prayer, and a uh, temporal uh, discipline of military life in order to serve the, serve the Lord. They put the best that they had spiritually and physically in the service of God and they carried the cross. They carried the cross. And that's ultimately the hidden mystery. That's the secret of the Knights Templar. It's the secret of the uh, Holy Sepulchre that we are willing to go to the ends of the world to venerate the mystery of our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection because we know that when we do, when we adopt a disciplined way of life that allows us to assimilate that spirituality and to endure the hardships that lead us to Jerusalem and the Holy Sepulchre, we know that we are preparing ourselves for victory. We are preparing ourselves even to meet death face to face and pass through the veil, and enter fully into the resurrection of the Lord. We have dress rehearsals for this all the time as we go through baptism. Baptism is death and resurrection. As we participate in the holy sacrifice of the Mass and celebrate, we celebrate the death and resurrection of the we Lord. We do a dress rehearsal for this every time we go to bed at night and then wake up in the morning. We, we die and we rise. This, this is the mystery of our faith, and we know that we will be victorious if we entrust ourselves to the Lord. So pilgrimages are a really important thing and, uh, and venerating the mysteries of our Lord's suffering and death 
and his resurrection uh, is the center of our faith. And so we remember uh, the great uh, tradition of the Knights Templar and, uh, and try to uh, assimilate ourselves to the spirit of prayer and action. God bless you, and we'll see you next time on Standing Fast. This is the end of this series on the secrets of the Knights Templar. Ave Maria.